If you were into reel-to-reel -reel recorders in the 80s or the 90s, you probably know all about Ampex 456 reels of tape. This was a reel of recording tape that I used many times back in the day, and I found that it almost always gave excellent results. Now before I go any further, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I post tech reviews every week. It won't cost you anything, there's no obligation on your behalf, but every time someone subscribes, it really helps my channel grow, and it would be really appreciated. Thank you very much. Now, Ampex 456 tape was produced from the late 70s up until the 1990s. And back in the day, I would buy it on a 7-inch reel, and the tape length was 1,200 feet. Now, at that time, in the mid-1990s, a new reel of Ampex 456 tape was about $20. That's what I would pay, about $20 Canadian plus tax. Now, the base material of this tape was polyester back-coated. Now, one thing this tape is famous for, unfortunately, is sticky shed syndrome. And I hope to talk more about sticky shed syndrome in an upcoming video. And if you happen to buy some of this tape, even if it is still sealed, be very careful. Be sure to check the tape before doing any recording with it to ensure that it has not deteriorated. Again, it can't be stressed enough that these tapes should not be played or wound before baking in most cases. And also tape baking is another thing that I hope to cover in a future video. If they are not baked first, winding will cause the oxide to be stripped from the polyester base. And it goes without saying that humidity and storage conditions for this tape are extremely important. Now, Ampex 456 offered very high output. The maximum operating level is very high, so much so that many older machines cannot fully utilize this tape's abilities. You can identify this tape by its brown oxide and back coating. The 456 series represents the standard play version, while the 457 was the long play version. Now, as many of you know, Ampex became Quantigy in 1995. And when that happened, the tape binder was reformulated. So from what I understand, most Quantigy labeled tapes seem to operate without issues and the sticky shed syndrome seems to have decreased a lot. So if you see a, a, a label of this tape and the brand name is Quantigy, you shouldn't have too many issues. But again, you should be very careful and always check the tape before using it. Now, back in the day, I used my reels of tape on a Roberts reel-to-reel, -reel, and I used to run it at seven and a half inches per second. And I would have ran it at a higher speed, but on that particular deck, seven and a half inches was the fastest speed it would run. And I would mostly use it when I would do mix down from my cassette four track. So I would run my cassette four track to the Roberts reel-to-reel, -reel, and I would do mix down. And it goes without saying that the Ampex 456 tape was used by many studios and many, many artists. Now my question for you, did you use Ampex 456? Were you a, an avid user of this particular tape? Do you still own some of these tapes? What did you think about it? Were you, did you find that it was a reliable tape? Did it give good quality recordings? I'd love to hear your opinion. Please leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, and as always, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.